Okay, so this is Spanner. Spanner is a surround channel manager, mapper, fold down, down mix tool uh, with low CPU overhead such that you could run it uh, on every single channel, um, perhaps even functioning as a replacement for the default Pro Tools panner. Uh, you'll see right away it is a single large pan window, pan field, uh, containing individual dots for each of the input channels. So in this case I've got a 5.1 track with a spanner inserted. Uh, so you'll see five individual pan dots um, which give you complete control over each of the individual channels either singly or as a, as a group. So you'll see each of the input channels has just five parameters that control its position in the pan field. Input trim, pan left right, front back, center percent and LFE send. Um, and all of the channels can be treated completely independently including the LFE which can be treated just like any other channel. Take it out of the LFE, feed it into the main mix and pan it around. So Spanner will work to upsize pretty much any standard track format to a, uh, to a 5.1. Um, so for example here's, a, here's an LCR track which is currently cannot be, cannot be assigned to my 5.1 bus. So I'm going to insert a Spanner and there we go. Now it is a 5.1 output, although it's still a three channel track, it's a 5.1 output which can get bus now to my 5.1 mix bus and now I can hear it and both control each channel individually or pull it back in the room if that's what I want to do. So I've now got complete control over what otherwise would have had to have been bus to a subpath and just hard assigned to the first three tracks. So given that we've got complete control over each of these individual channels, you'll see right away that this also doubles as an incredibly powerful, infinitely flexible downmix tool. So I've allowed an audio suite version, which of course means audio suite offline faster than real time fold downs, which is pretty spectacular. Um, so I've selected here a 5.1 piece of audio, grab from the downmix menu one of these presets I've made, and you can course make your own. Stereo ITU, hitting render, done. There's a fold down. Uh, now there are lots of, sort of caveats of course with um, overs and clipping channels and I'll show in another video a particular workflow I've got figured out for, uh, for down mixing like this. Uh, needless to say this is a huge time saver for, for those of us working in post that have to regularly do down mixes of things. So um, yeah, check out that other video. Okay, so the next thing I should show you, I guess, is the uh, metering. Uh, if I play my 7.1 here, you'll see right away the meters point in the direction you expect to see them. So it's an incredibly intuitive way to look at meters. There's no more counting trying to figure out which one's the right surround side. You can, it's, it's obvious. Um, and the clip lights as well make it pretty easy to see when you've, uh, when you've doubled up on a channel especially panning a large, you know, maybe seven or eight channels around a, a pan field. So I can even turn some of these off so you can see what it looks like in a mono. So to, to reiterate, the, the meters represent output channels and these dots represent input channels. So the, the meters will always show five, uh, five directions, it being a 5.1 plugin. Okay, you, you may have already noticed as I'm, as I'm moving dots around this pan field, the dot itself sort of follows behind me as if attached to a little piece of elastic. Well, that's controlled by the smoothing uh, feature down here. This is not an automatable parameter, this is just uh, an aid to input. So it just helps you get a nice smooth pan happening when using your mouse. Um, I guess you could you could get some quite interesting effects with it as well. Uh, it gives a nice acceleration deceleration. I tend to prefer just a touch of it, although you can completely turn it off if you wish and get a really accurate pan. So for anyone with an Arta series Yukon surface, uh, there's another fantastic feature in that on these surfaces you can call up an insert uh, such as Spanner. Uh, and then once it's up, as long as you stay in that spanner mode on the, on the control surface, as you navigate around the session, a spanner window will follow. So this is something you can't do with the standard panner. And I know it's something that a lot of people always talk about and ask for. 
Um, so that's that's incredibly useful to be able to just quickly see what you've got and very quickly do a, do a pan pass. Okay, so that was Spanner. I hope you find it as useful as I do. Uh, I'll leave you now with an example of some of the more creative possibilities with Spanner. Cool, see ya.